Hello everyone, in this session we will discuss payroll liabilities. When an employee or when you receive your paycheck, you often notice that there is a difference between the gross pay, the total amount you are paid for, and the net pay, the take-home amount. The difference comes from various mandatory and voluntary deductions. For example, if an employee earns $3,000, their net pay, their take-home amount, could be around 2200 less than 3000 What is this $800? What happened to it? That $800 was withheld by your employer for different reasons. It could be federal income tax. That's the portion of a tax that you have to pay to the federal government. Also, the state government will take a cut. That's another deduction for the state government. In some states, you have to pay local taxes as well. There's also Social Security tax, Medicare tax, which are called FICA taxes, Federal Insurance Contribution Act, Contribution Act taxes. We will discuss those deductions in the session. FICA taxes fund your retirement and fund your health care when you are retired or disabled. There could be other deductions. You as an employee may choose to, to opt in to have some money deducted for your health care for your dental plan, for your retirement account, for your 401k, or maybe for some money contributed to the Red Cross. Each of these deductions is considered a liability for the company because all what the company is doing is taking this money, which is your money from your paycheck, withholding the money, then sending the money to the various governmental agencies in, in, in case of the taxes, to the healthcare insurance company, to the voluntary deductions like your 401k, dental plan, so on and so forth. So in this session, we would look at those deductions. We would define them specifically, the mandatory deductions, because if you know how to do accounting for mandatory deduction, the same accounting is for use for voluntary deduction. However, the mandatory deduction, there are specific rules you need to learn about specifically when it comes to FICA. Also in this session, we would look at state and federal unemployment insurance that the employer in most states will have to pay, especially SUDA, federal, always the employer, and we'll, we'll discuss those. They are called for short, SUTA and FUTA. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Federal Unemployment Tax or FUTA, that's the first of the two taxes that are mandatory employer taxes. The employer pays them, not the employee. What is the rate for FUTA? The rate is 6%. And it's only up to $7,000 of an employee's earnings. It means once you earn up to $7,000, your employer will stop paying this tax on your behalf. It means the employer satisfied their obligation to the government. Now, we said it's 6%, the rate, but here's what's going to happen. The federal government, because this is a federal unemployment tax, will give you a 54 percent credit therefore the net tax is 0.6 percent so let me explain this so if you look at the actual form at the FUTA form the federal unemployment tax when the employer submit their taxes it says six percent if you read the forms further line three line four it says are you in good standing with your state and if you say yes good standing means you are paying your state unemployment tax which we will talk about next and i would say 99 point nine let's say 
99.99% of employers should be in good standing. They're paying their state unemployment. And if the answer is yes, you are, then you get a tax credit of 5.4. You end up paying 0.6%. Therefore, the FUTA rate is 0.6%. We're going to come back and explain the purpose of the FUTA rate. But first, let's talk about SUTA. SUTA is another tax. So FUTA is one tax that the employer has to pay. SUTA is another tax. First of all, because it's a state, it varies by state. Each state will have a different rate. And each state will have a different cap. Cap means income cap. For federal unemployment, we said up to 7,000 of the wages are subject to FUTA. The state, it, could, it, it depends. It could be 8,000. It could be 7,000, it could be 6,000, it could be any other number. And the rate and the cap can be adjusted. Usually the rate is adjusted. What does that mean? It means maybe your rate this year is 4%, next year is 5%, the following year is 3 then the year after is 7 So there is a merit system. Depending on how much do you use unemployment insurance, so let's explain what the state unemployment tax is. State unemployment is that fund that fund your employees unemployment insurance. So if you lay off your employees, if your employees loses their job because of business reasons, you downsize, uh, you're outsourcing some of the work, then you lay them off, you let them go. It's not their fault, you let them go. Then they can collect from the state. So hold on a second. If they collect from the state, why do we have FUTA then? We're going to explain. SUTA is where you collect from your state. Here's what's going to happen. Let's assume in a particular state, let's say Pennsylvania for the sake of illustration, this fund, this unemployment fund ran out. You went down to zero. The fund no longer have money because a lot of companies in the state of Pennsylvania are laying off their people. Here's what you do. The federal government would intervene and they will fund you. Why they would fund you? Because you were contributing. The employer was contributing also to the federal unemployment. So the federal unemployment is an insurance to the state insurance. Think of it this way. Now, a case in point during COVID. During COVID, many states ran out of money because they kept on extending the unemployment benefits. Therefore, the federal government intervened and fund those states. So another two mandatory taxes are FUTA and SUTA. SUTA is the unemployment insurance fund that pays you when you get laid off. FUTA is the, it administer all the SUTA in case they run out of money, it will fund them. For the sake of this example, we will assume the same limits for SUTA as FUTA, which is the limit is 7,000. And the rate for this SUTA example is 4.2%. The rate could be anything for the state. So for this employer that got paid $5,000, and we're assuming that this employee did not reach up to $7,000, we're going to take 5,500 multiplied by the FUTA rate, and the employer, the company is responsible for $33. Then for SUTA, we'll take the 5,500, again, the employer, the employee did not reach the limit, multiplied by 4.2%, the company is responsible for $200. $231 in SUTA. Let's journalize the entry. So we will debit. First, let's do the credit. We credit SUTA payable 231. We credit FUTA payable 33. And we debit an expense called payroll tax expense. So who pays this tax? The company. The company. Who's the company? Your employer. Your employer is responsible for this tax. Then eventually, we will pay off the tax, we credit cash, we debit the payable. So what we did is we added $264 to our payroll tax of 420.75, which is FICA, SS, FICA, Medicare. So those are, so the $684.75, those are the employer share of payroll tax for this employee. So yes, they paid the employee 5,500. Then they are responsible for an additional $684.75. Now, just because of Pennsylvania, where I live, is one of those odd states, the employee also contribute 
to the state fund. Very, very small amount, like around $20, $30 the whole year. Nevertheless, I want to mention it because in case I have someone from Pennsylvania listening, it could be some uh, one or two states too, they do that where the employee also fund the state unemployment. But those are the exceptions. We don't learn about state unemployment. We just kind of give you a rate and we move on, whether it's for your class or the CPA exam. So what's going to happen next is this. We need to work a comprehensive example. So the best way to illustrate this is to work a comprehensive example with an actual, maybe a payroll register, few employees, pay them, get the deduction, do the entries, make everything fits in one page, <laughs> works together, fit in one page. That's a good one. Fit on one page. Um, what should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, lectures multiple choice that's going to help you understand this important payroll liabilities and payroll itself payroll as a concept itself is a good field to go into if you are studying accounting invest in yourself good luck and of course stay safe let's start to discuss mandatory deduction when we say mandatory it means the employer don't have the option not to take this money, not to deduct this money from the paycheck. And specifically, we are we will be looking at the Federal Insurance Contribution Act known as FICA deductions. So those deductions are non-negotiable. So what is this FICA? FICA consists of two taxes. So the first thing you do when you think of FICA, FICA consists of two taxes. One is called Social Security tax and the other one is called Medicare tax. So I'm going to discuss each one separately because they are two different taxes, but they all falls under FICA. Social Security or FICA Social Security is 6.2%. So you pay 6.2% on earning up to a certain threshold. So up to a point, you pay 6.2%. What's this threshold? This, this threshold will change from year to year. For the purpose of the year 2024, the amount is 168,600. I remember when this amount was in the 60,000. So every year, the government will increase this threshold at subject to inflation, subject to political discussion, so on and so forth. But the first thing you need to know is the rate. We have a rate and we have a limit. So the rate is 6.2. And up to how much? Up to 168,600 of your earnings per year are subject to 6.2%. So let me show you for the sake of illustration what would be that amount assuming you're the year in 2024. If we take the maximum amount, which is 168,600, 168,600 times. 6.2% at any point in time, the maximum amount that an employee will pay in Social Security in total for a particular year is $10,453.20. So this is the maximum amount given the year limit 2024. What happened if this if this employee earns more than 168,600? So each additional dollar above this amount so, so if this employee earns, you know, an additional ten dollars or ten million dollars, in addition to one sixty-eight six hundred, that additional amount is not subject to social security tax. So, the social security tax is limited to one hundred sixty-eight thousand six hundred of your earnings. You might be asking, why do they stop taking taxes? And the reason is simple, because when you retire, this is the money that you are putting away post-retirement. So the government will give you a paycheck to retire, to live off when you retired. Well, that paycheck that they give you is also limited. So you pay a limited amount of money into this, into this fund and you get a limited amount out. So that's why they stop you. So that's the social security component of FICA. So the rate, 6.2% and there's a limit. Let's talk about Medicare. Medicare is 1.45%, 1.45%. For Medicare, there's no cap, there's no limit. You make 
$10,000, you pay 1.45%. You make $10 million that year, you pay 1.45%. So 1.45% with no income cap, meaning it's deducted from all your earnings regardless of the amount. Now, why? Why the Medicare will not, they will not limit you? Because when you will use this money when you retire and you have Medicare coverage, the government no, don't know whether you are going to cost them $10 or $10 million. And I know many people that live healthy and they basically with minimal Medicare. And I know some, I know some people that cost the government millions and millions of dollars after they retire. So that's why there's no limit on Medicare because you don't know what you will be using. Now, these taxes, as I mentioned, fund retirement. I said, you know, social security retirement. Also, if you become disabled and obviously met the Medicare for health insurance, that's what Medicare is, but after you are retired or disabled. So this is what you need to know about social security from an employee perspective. You pay 6.2 for social security for Medicare 1.45. For social security, you are limited per year to how much you pay up to 168600 for Medicare, you are not. Now, bear in mind, Social Security and Medicare, especially Social Security, came after the Great Depression because people lost their savings and the government wanted to create a Social Security system that can help people retire, live, off, live during the retirement years because if they lost their savings, and their investments, and that's what happened in the Great Depression. People lost everything. So at least it's some sort of a safety net. Now, this is the employee po portion. Here's what you need to know about FICA Social Security and FICA Medicare. Each penny the employee pays, so we have an employee pays, and the employee pays 6.2%, and 1.45. I don't have to keep repeating. The Social Security is subject to limit. I already told you this. Here's what you need to know. Your employer, the company that you work for, will have to fund the same amount. They have to match you. Employer must match the amount withheld for FICA taxes, doubling the contribution going to these funds. What does that mean? It means if you're an employee, you pay this amount, 6.2 and 1.45. But the rate is not really 6.2. The rate is the social security rate is 12.4%. You pay 6.2, your employer pays 6.2%. How about Medicare? What's the rate? The rate for Medicare is 2.9%. You pay 1.45, your employer pays 1.45. Hold on a second. What if I'm not an employee? What if I have my own company? Well, if you have your own company, you pay 12.45 for social security, 2.9 for Medicare. Now, bear in mind, if you are self-employed, you get a deduction for half of your contribution. And we don't we don't discuss self-employment in this course. We'll discuss it in your income tax course. But I want you, just in case you're wondering what happened if I work for myself, you pay both. And that's why it's 12.4. You pay half, your employer pays half. If you're self-employed, you are both the employee and the employer. Therefore, you pay the double that you get a deduction. So FICA Social Security is a mandatory deduction. Mandatory deduction, it means employers will have to withheld this money from your paycheck. You, you have no option. Now we have mandatory and we have voluntary deductions. Voluntary deductions are voluntary deductions. You know, those are employee choices. The employee can also have voluntary deduction, which could include your 401k, your retirement. You can also, in addition to your social security, no one wants to rely on social security because the government will pay you a little bit. You can barely live off social security. You have to fund your own retirement or your own pension if the company offer you a pension. That's, those are voluntary deduction. You might belong to a union. If you belong to a labor organization, you pay dues. You may want to donate you know, a certain amount of your paycheck to charities. You tell your employer to take it directly from your paycheck. You want to pay for your insurance. Maybe sometime the company pays for the insurance. Sometimes you have to pay for it. Sometimes you pay part of it. Well, those are additional deductions, additional insurance premium. And you could have many other deductions. Any deduction you would like to deduct, 
that's fine as well but those are voluntary now we have again we have mandatory and voluntary now how about other taxes now we talked we only spoke about Social Security and Medicare under other taxes you would have in the US federal income tax you would have a state income tax you will have a local income tax now some of these are also mandatory for example in some states it's mandatory in some states it may not be the federal income tax depending on how you file with your employer they may or may not take money and in some places there there's there are no local taxes that's why I don't cover them because they could be voluntary they could be mandatory but we will sh see them in an example I just want you to see there are other taxes as well so let's take a look at an example to start to illustrate these concepts let's look at a journal entry during the month of February an employee earned 5,500 the withholding of the employee consists of the following 6.2 percent of this amount for Social Security which is 341 dollars let me just double check the math to make sure it's correct this 341 dollars 1.45 let me double check the math as well we took 5,500 times 1.45 79 dollars and 79 cent federal income tax was taking 550 this is given I mean there's a way on how, how to compute this but you, you would learn about this in your payroll course state income taxes also the state would held money 120 employee employee funded the retirement 200 dollars now I'm gonna sh I'm going to show you the journal entry for this paycheck so if you want to copy the numbers down you're gonna see it on the next slide so what's the journal entry here's the journal entry we debit salaries expense 5,500 so this is the expense for the employer then the employer will credit these are credit FICA taxes payable 341 FICA taxes uh, for the Medicare 7975 employee federal income taxes payable 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 550 employee state income taxes payable 120 employee retirement contribution payable 200 so notice what they did is they recorded of an expense of 5500 then they took that money away all this money is the employee money all what they're doing it's your money as an employee they're taking this money and they are holding it on your behalf then they will send it to the appropriate government so the point I'm trying to make here is we only have one expense for the company and the expense is 5,500 then this is the net pay for this is the net pay or the cash amount that the employee receive four thousand two hundred nine dollars and twenty five cent this is five thousand five hundred minus all the deductions but the expense is five thousand five hundred for the company now what you need to know is all these payables will have to be paid all the payables will have to be paid so when we pay them we debit the payable notice now we are debiting all these payables and we're crediting cash now we may not do this in one journal entry for example in the real world FICA FICA and federal taxes we pay those together you don't have to know this but from a payroll perspective you pay those together then you will send the state taxes to the state capital separately then the employee contribution for the retirement is paid separately I just put them together I just want to show you that all the liabilities all the liabilities that we created the company will eventually send the money and they will credit cash to pay them and obviously I'm not, I am not going to tell you that eventually they will debit this account and they will credit cash to pay the employee four thousand two hundred nine dollars and twenty five cent and as a result all those liabilities remember we have to get rid of the liabilities are gone all the liabilities are gone now we looked at the employee paycheck now let's take a look at the employer matching contribution remember what we talked about the employer will have to match FICA Medicare and FICA Social Security to record the employer matching contribution we're gonna look at Social Security and Medicare here's what the employer would do the employer will have to come up with three hundred forty one dollars for FICA Social Security taxes payable and FICA Medicare 79 75 which is the same as the employee and the employer will debit payroll tax expense so in addition to the 5,500 that we paid the employee we have to come up with 
$20.75 as additional taxes. Those taxes are for matching the contribution of Social Security and Medicare. And this amount, this $420.75, you don't see it on your paycheck. Your employer will have to pay it on their own. Therefore, here we have notice another expense. So this employee cost the company in total of 5,500 plus 420. So the total is the total expense for the company. Now, eventually the company will have to pay FICA taxes. How do they pay FICA taxes? They will debit the liability and they will credit cash. Now in the real world, what you do is you combine the employee and the employer together, you'll send one payment. I just showed it to you separately. So for illustration purposes, in the real world, you will take the employee, the employer, you combine them together and you make the payment. Let's take a look at other mandatory employer taxes. So be careful here. Who pays these taxes? The employer. Well, hold on a second. You just told me about Social Security and Medicare. Yes, but there are other mandatory employer taxes. So in addition to Medicare and Social Security, your employer, the company that hires you, will have to pay taxes on your behalf because you are an employee of that company. Let's take a look at these employer mandatory taxes.